Hello, 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 and praise the Lord. If you're like, wow, Nicole, you like seem so up close and personal and big and in your face tonight, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted you to feel like you are on Skype. <laughs> you're on here talking to your friend and your sister. I told you all that I would be back and um here i am no i didn't pass gas at that was the chair that was the chair <laughs> yes but it is so 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 good to be back um oh my goodness i i have so 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 much to say so much to talk about but right now i just want to get down to business um i thought about doing a hair tutorial which um well a review i'll say um on my hair but um i will get to that and i will do that i thought about doing you know a makeup um video uh, a tutorial and my lighting with this um webcam that i got uh, my husband bought me uh for um because my webcam on my computer, the built-in webcam was acting crazy and um, not responding and all that other stuff. So we went and got me one so I could uh, continue doing the video. So thank you so much, hubby. I love that man so much. Um, so I was like, okay, what do I wanna do? The baby sleep, um, okay, which, which one do I wanna get back into? And um, I, as I told you all before, I always say, God, I, I just want you to lead me and direct me into what to do. And it fell in my spirit to encourage. And I was like, okay, so uh, I'll get back to the hair. I'll get back to um, the tutorials. Um, I'll encourage God so what do you want me to say what do you have for me um, to talk about and I sat there and I said because I'm not getting on there and do anything I'll just you know go on and go ahead to sleep because it is hard to do the videos with the baby and keeping um, eye on my other um, children um, uh, and my stepchildren and um maintaining the house and cooking and all that like that's my first ministry that's my first priority so i'm like i gotta balance this out and sometimes i'm just sitting there like oh i'm not tired and you know so when he's the bed and he's resting and hubby is resting and the kids are resting and everybody's all good i'm like okay i'll go down there and get on with god only if you you know or you know it's nothing i don't need any direction to get on here and talk about hair or makeup but um when it comes to encouragement i take it i take it seriously and i'm like god only you know what your people need so as i'm talking and talking and talking and talking um what um i feel the lord was leading me uh to talk about and to encourage um everyone on is the purpose in your pain and i just kept hearing him saying there's pain there's pain there is there is purpose in your pain yes okay thank you jesus so i was like okay wow god and um as you all saw my video the other day i was telling you all about um one of the um young women at my church this woman of god um charnel she had started a prayer group via email and it has been such a blessing in my life and a lot um the life of you know others and you all are hitting me up on facebook and wanting to join and everything and um you know just emails that i get anyway asking for prayer from you guys from friends from um some family you know it's 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 it, it it has been a lot and some of you are going through a lot and even my husband and i 
have been going through some things, um, not with each other, but, you know, outside job and, you know, all those little, you know, crazy things, some crazy things, you know, have, you know, taken place. But all oh, the testimony after this, after this, and oh my goodness, you know, and, and I'll tie in, you know, there's purpose, there's purpose in your pain. You know, but after this, you are going to have victory. You are going to have joy. You are going to have peace. And I'll add, even in the midst of your pain, you still can have joy. You still can have victory. You are victorious. You know, the Word of God tells us that we win. Simply, we win. So... You know, I, I sat there and I said, okay, God, you know, you're saying there is, you know, purpose in the pain. And then I always go back to my life and um, the things that I encountered in uh, broken relationships and, you know, things that I went through um, in church and not in my current church, but, you know, other churches that I had attended. And, you know, we want to shy away from that conversation or whatever of church hurt and it, it seemed like for me you know being a backslider you know at, at well first getting my life to the Lord and receiving the Holy Ghost at 16 years old but before then losing my mind uh, losing not losing my mind <laughs> no but um feeling like it at sometimes but losing my mom at a very young age my sister and I losing um, my, our mom at a young age and then going to live with our father and um, it just being a, a, a big change a, a huge you know change from being with your mother for all these years and then now going to live with your dad not that I didn't want to live with my dad but I never knew that it would be because of my you know my mother dying my mother passing so you know just that transition and then you know at 16 meeting someone thinking that I was already saved and she introducing me to church and having a personal relationship with God and then being taken out of church and then just doing me and you know now losing my virginity and getting in these messed up, you know, and crazy relationships. Not really knowing who I was. Not knowing that on this day in June of 2012 that I would be saved, that I would be delivered. I never thought, you know, I just, I, I, I just never thought. And even backsliding. Um, as from a result of being taken out of church and just feeling like I don't even know how I'm going to step foot back into church because I've been gone so long and then on top of that because I felt like I was so I was so far gone you know and you know some of you all have heard parts you know of my testimony and all that and then you know, like I said, with the relationships and then, you know, being a backslider, coming back to church and meeting this guy that was in church and, you know, me thinking that he was a good guy, you know, getting set up with him and you wind up talking to another young lady in the church and being hurt and it's like, okay, I went through this mess with men in the world. You know, for all this, I could have dated somebody unsaved. I could have just been unequally yoked and knew what I was expecting. But little did I know that there was purpose, even in my pain. And, you know, I, could, I, I just go back to that day, you know, sitting in church and knowing that me and this young man. And, and okay, I don't, I know why the Lord is leading me this way. Because obviously someone may need encouragement in this area. But I remember sitting in church and I remember me and this young man had actually went to premarital counseling and, 
you know, talk to somebody and started, and at first I wasn't even attracted. And now I hear this person that I wasn't even trying to give the time of day. Now I'm just so wrapped up in him. And, um, you know, to, to see all that and to see him preach and teach in Bible study and to know that we were in a full blown relationship. And now to see him denying me and to hear you know him say that I, I might have been a stumbling block when I was totally unaware of all this I'm thinking that we're on the same page and sitting there like God you know is is this what you brought me back for to be hurt you know to be made ashamed uh, I'm trying to do things your way i'm a babe in christ and you know i've dealt with those i've dealt with drug dealers i've you know i've done my thing and now here i come to do it right and here you know the pastor introduces me to this young man so i'm giving my trust and and this happens but all the while not knowing what or where or what place I was in I was just like I know the enemy is trying to drive me out of church he's trying to drive me out of the will of God even though I was a babe I knew that much and I knew that I had I had to stay and it hurt seeing him still teaching and speaking in tongues and shouting and I'm sitting up there like you hurt me you drove a knife through my heart and the enemy wanted me to backslide. He wanted me to say, forget it. I'm about to go back to the club where I got, you know, my excitement and my joy. That's where, you know, I got away from the cares of life by going to the club, by, you know, going out with men. And, you know, that time I was serious. God was putting a standard in me. It was purpose in my pain, just like it's purpose. In your pain there is purpose and even though God doesn't will for some things to happen some things may be allowed to happen but I promise you it is not to take you out it is not to take you out you may have given your heart you may have given your all to a man or to a woman because we feel like you know sometimes oh men they don't feel anything men don't get hurt men get hurt as well men get hurt also so you may have felt like you've given your all to this person and they just stomped on your heart they just stabbed you in your back and that is a hurt that you can't even explain sometimes you know especially when you're saved and you've given your life to Christ and it's a man of God or a woman of God that's done it to you. You're like, dude, sis, are you serious? But even in that, there is purpose in your pain. I tell you as a living example, do not give up. Do not walk away from God because of what men have done to you. Because there is purpose in your pain. God will slowly begin to show you who you are and I'm gonna tell you because I thought that I couldn't take anything I used to be a crier like if you if you said something to me I just fall apart and I start crying and I'm not saying God allows evil things on you to make you strong no life brings things your way everything that the enemy meant for evil God turns it around for your good so these things happening were actually working for my good it was teaching me to stand it also gave me a testimony so that i can tell you you can stand because i went through it and i experienced experienced it and god is now using me to speak to other young women and tell you don't leave god don't give up don't go back it's not worth it and i'm not even going to say you know don't do that because god has somebody else it's it, it, and he does but it's not about that. It's not about that. It's about knowing who you are in Christ and that you have a purpose, that you have a call on your life, that you are anointed for a work. 
He has a position and a place for you that he wants to use you to do greater things, to do greater works through you. And you cannot allow that situation to overtake you. You cannot just settle for being hurt. You cannot no longer cry over that broken relationship. If he wants to go and he's gone, life goes on. I'm a living witness. And I can tell you that after I experienced that hurt, I was like, God, oh my goodness, I never want to go through this again. So there was, I got on my path, you know, again, of not dating. I said, I don't care who brings anybody to me, you know, I'm not getting with it. And here again, I, again, I met this, this young man and, and I witnessed to him. And he received the Holy Ghost and he was going forth in God. And he said, God told me that I was your wife. I mean, God forgive me no that I was your husband. He said, God told me that you are my wife and I'm your husband. And I said, God ain't tell me that, brother. Because he didn't. But the more time I spent with this young man, the more we talked on the phone and talked about our interests and everything which is the same thing that i did with the first guy so you have to look at the signs in order to learn from your mistakes even if you have to write them down so you can remember what did i do the first time that got me into this crazy situation that i am and i didn't have a mom and i didn't have um, a spiritual mom at the time and women surrounding me to give me advice experience was my teacher but now i'm telling you so you don't have to experience it and if you have to tell you that even though you went through it there is purpose even in your pain and so i began to talk to this young man not paying attention to the signs talking on the phone with him and still saying god i'm going to keep myself i'm not going to have sex or whatever like that and you know, we're not dating, but I left out prayer. I left out, you know, praying and asking God, should I even talk to him? Should I even take his number? You know, if this isn't my husband, should I be spending this much time with him on the phone? You know, none of that was going through my mind. It was just, okay, I, I witnessed to him. He received the Holy Ghost. Yeah, he's talking all this, but he was attractive. I mean... I'm not saying the devil sent him, but <laughs> he can he can send somebody to your liking, you know. And sometimes you have to watch out because the first one, I wasn't, not that he was ugly, but, you know, I just wasn't attracted to guys shorter than me, I'd say. But, you know, he wasn't ugly, you know, at all. And, you know... You sit up there and say, oh, there's nothing wrong with this guy or this female being in my space. I'm not even really attracted to them like that. But you have to be careful. You know what I'm saying? You put no confidence in this flesh. And I mean, you got to do it. That's how you got to be. But this guy, he was cute. And he was tall, just like I liked him. I didn't care what complexion then because I took him black, white, yellow, Puerto Rican, or Haitian. You hear me? <laughs> But, you know, I was like, wow, I'm just being in the company of a man and God, I'm doing this thing right now. Could this really be it? And all the while asking questions, but never really praying and talking to God. Long story short, I, I wind up with, you know, the, him proposing to me, me having a wedding dress and I had the date set to get married. And some of you have heard this testimony. Some of you have not. And here I am again in a, in a predicament, getting farther than I did with the first one and being let down again. And I'm like, God, you know, I, I'm in my word. I'm fasting. I'm living for you. I'm not doing the things that I used to do. And here I am getting hurt all over again. I mean, what is it? Do I just. And am I just not supposed to have love? Am I just, you know, and I struggled even though God told me, you know, he told me he wasn't the one. And even though I know I heard God's voice, I still struggled with 
accepting it. I mean, I let him go, but then I was like, oh, are you going to send him back? Is he, is, was he really the one? I mean, you know, and oh my goodness, how could this happen again? Someone hurt, hurt me again. Here he is telling me he's going back to, you know, the woman he was with, you know, t when he met me. And I'm just sitting there having to tell my boss, oh, I'm not going to need that time. Telling my family members, oh, you know, the, you know, the date is off, not getting married, you know, feeling embarrassed, feeling ashamed, feeling broken hearted that again, I'm in the situation, you know, as soon as I came in, you know, it was just heartbreak and hurt and these were supposed to be by guys who said that they cared for me that they loved me and God was showing me all the while that there was purpose in my pain and he was showing me that nobody can love you like I love you yeah you put your confidence in men when you were in the world but now that you're in me you put all your confidence in me you let me make you hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. You let me prepare you because I am going to establish you. And when you talk to me, when you pray to me, when you mean business, when you say by any means necessary, my eyes are staying on you. I'm no longer going to play victim. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek your face. I am not just going to allow anybody into my space again. I'm going to consult you on all things. I'm going to allow you to in place a new wisdom. I'm not going to be so quick to get with someone so that I won't be lonely. Or just let them talk circles around me. And I had to get established in God. There was a purpose all the time. There was a purpose all the time. All the things that came. That's why I was, I wrote on my Facebook page, we were talking about loving hip hop, Atlanta, and I saw a lot of statuses and all that, not, you know, um, about, you know, what happened, but I'm like, God, you know, this is the place that some of us are in. Some of you all have children by men and you've been hurt and here you are, you've given your all to this man. You were sitting there faced with the decision to have an abortion, but you chose to do the right thing. And he said, I'll be there. And now you find yourself struggling to raise your children. Some of you, they don't want anything to do with you and the children. Some of you, they want to have the relationship with the child, but don't really care about you. Some of you, your relationship has been broken with them as a result of him cheating. And now he's with the woman that he cheated with. And now you have to have your children go over and be with this woman and him who he left you for. And it's hard. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. But even in this pain, even in this embarrassment, even the shame sometimes and the disappointment that you've constantly felt. God is still calling you. He's saying that you can make it. I'm a living witness. And there is purpose in your pain. Sometimes we want to hold on to people that mean us no good. There is nothing that's attaching their purpose to ours. There is nothing but the child holding you together. There is nothing but lust holding you together. A soul tie. Everything else is wrong, but you keep holding on to all the good things that it used to do. Not looking at him now for who he is knowing that you need to leave him alone but you want to stay with him just for the purpose of not being alone 
I'm coming back with part two.